So this course is going to be about distributed optimization. But before we get into the distributed aspect of optimization, so we'll uh, review the basics of optimization, right? So basics of convex functions, convex sets, and so on. So just to give you a brief outline of what we are going to look at uh, in this lecture. So we are going to look at uh, optimization problems in general. How do we mathematically formulate optimization problems? Then we are going to look at something called convex sets and convex functions. Then there is going to be discussion about certain operations that preserve convexity. So, uh, so if you if I give you a set of convex functions, can you come up with a new function that is also going to be convex that is uh, based on these original functions, right? So, operations that preserve con uh, convexity. Then uh, first and second order conditions for convexity. And if you remember in the last lecture we mentioned something about strict, uh, strongly convex functions versus non strongly convex functions. So, in the same spirit we are going to look at uh, functions of the uh, which are called strictly convex functions and we will look at the importance of uh, studying strictly convex functions and then uh, also strongly convex functions. Okay. So, these are going to be the topics of discussion for today's lecture. All right. So, how do we mathematically define an optimization problem? So, a typical optimization problem has uh, this kind of flavor, right? So, you want to minimize or maximize a particular function f of x, x lies in Rn. So, if I if I give you a, a problem of this form, just this this alone, and this this would be called unconstrained optimization right because x can take any values and this is called unconstrained optimization or unconstrained optimization problem. But most real world optimization problems are in fact uh, I mean they have some implicit or explicit constraints right. So, you can specify those constraints and it would be subject to certain constraints of this form let us say some function h i x less than equal to 0 and they can be multiple such functions. So, let us say there are m such inequalities. So, these are called inequality constraints and then you can also have something called equality constraints. So, for all j in 1 through some r. Okay. So, this is a typical uh, definition or formulation of a constrained optimization problem. Is this clear? So, H i s are your inequality constraints and L j s are your equality constraints. Okay. All right. So, what is f here? Cost or you can say it is an it is basically your objective function right. So, f is called objective function. So, this is objective function objective function x is your it is called decision variable or optimization variable. And in this case x is a x is really a vector right. 
so x has n n components uh, x1 x2 so basically it's you have n uh, n decision variables or n scalar decision variables okay because x lies in r all right so why did we just mention main, like can maximization be an optimization problem right so why why did we write this particular form and not maximization right so you can relate minimization and maximization as so minimizing f of x is equivalent to maximizing negative of f of x right right so that's why i mean this this in itself is a general uh, form of mathematical optimization problem in certain cases when f happens to be convex and uh, hi's or the inequality constraints these functions hi also happen to be convex functions and lj's are linear equality constraints so this is called a convex uh, optimization problem okay so convex we still don't i mean we still haven't uh, introduced what convex functions and convex sets are but just for now we so convex optimization problem is when your f is convex function your inequality constraints hi is are convex functions and lj's are linear inequal linear equalities so we call this convex optimization problem yeah No, so the function is a scalar function. Like, I mean, it's a scalar valued function, right? So this can be an example can be uh, f of x is let's say x one square plus x two square. So you you still get just one output. So this output needs to be minimized. Yeah, x is a vector here. X is an R n, right? So it has n components, and those n components are x one, x two, x n. Okay. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. yeah not yet so i mean uh, right now we are just going to be studying optimization first and once we have a good handle on uh, how, how to pose optimization problem then we will move into designing distributed optimization algorithm okay so if domain of f right domain on which this function f is de defined let's say this turns out to be rn whole of rn so then this particular set so x in r n such that h i of x less than equal to 0 l j of x equal to 0 for every i j i j defined in this set over here so this particular uh this particular set is called yeah feasible solution set right it's a feasible solution set okay right so any feasible point so so we are trying to find the point at which f gets minimized but then any uh, feasible point would be defined uh by the set of points for which this uh these constraints are satisfied right so this is your feasible solution set within this feasible solution set we are trying to find an x star which basically minimizes your function f of x okay and there are several algorithms through which you can do that uh, i mean there are first order primal dual algorithms first order primal dual methods then there are second order methods as well which uses the hessian uh, information so how many of you have uh, worked with neural networks so you must be aware of something called lbfgs for instance as one of the optimizers or ada hessian right so ada hessian would be an example of a second order method which uses hessian information or newton's method uh, that that is again an example of second order method uh, first order method would be uh, where which basically just simply relies on the gradient and does not use the hessian of the function so those are those come under first order method so we'll we'll look at these algorithms uh, uh, in, in in the later half of the course or at least uh, in the subsequent lectures but uh, i mean 
to find an optimal uh, solution or a fees in, in this feasible solution set, we use uh, several algorithms. So, let us look at few examples of uh, uh, like common uh, optimization problems and we will also try to relate this to how this these uh, examples can be viewed in a distributed setting too. Okay. So, an example. So, L1 regularized least squares problem. So, what do we have it, what do we have here? So, you have some measurement y in some let us say y in R s ok. You have some measurement y. So, y is your measurement from measured signal ok. M is your measurement matrix which is known. Okay, it it may be so in some s cross n and v is some noise okay so you have a device that measures uh, some noisy signal x and gives some output y so x is something that we are trying to estimate based on the measured signal y okay and v is some noise and this noise is also in rs and this x is an unknown signal that we are trying to measure or we are trying to estimate rather and this is in R n. And typically in such problems we assume that s is much much smaller than n. So, what you can measure is a uh, I mean so this measured signal y it belongs to a uh, R s which so s you assume s to be much much smaller than n. So, if have you seen this problem in any context? So, have you heard of things like sparse recovery or compressive sensing? So, the idea is we want to find out x right. So, we want to I mean noise is something that we do not know anyway. So, we want to minimize we want to find x in R n such that based on our measurement y and the measurement matrix m. So, this difference is minimized right. We assume that noise is anyway small. So, this is what we want to find an x which minimizes this difference. But if you have a scenario where s is much smaller than n. So, this is a if your signal is a sparse basically then we add something called L 1 penalty constraint. So, only the relevant uh, co components of x is what I mean basically are going to be picked up most of the entries in, our, in x are going to be 0 and this is when we add this L 1 penalty here. So, this kind of uh, optimization so, this is an opti example of an optimization problem without the constraints. So, there are no constraints here we want it is an unconstrained minimization problem and uh, it's it's very common in uh, domains like a print uh, applications like compressive sensing or image processing and this particular l1 penalty is added to ensure uh, sparsity so this ensures sparsity so if your signal is a sparse if you know that only a certain entries are going to be non zero every other entry is largely going to be 0 then you add this L 1 penalty right. When you train neural networks uh, we add an L 1 constraint as well right sometimes on the weight parameters because we just want to make sure that the uh, the weights which are relevant are going to be non zeros rest of the weights are going to be zeros right and this is pretty much the same thing this is like a mean square loss and plus the L 1 constraint ok. So, this is an example of an L 1 regularized least squares problem ok. So, how would this look in a distributed setting? So, let us say I have a network now ok. Something like this ok, it is a network and every node or every agent in the network measures this x but I mean basically they are trying to measure x they have their own measurement matrix. Let us say that i th node has a measurement matrix m i n sub i and it ends up measuring signal or the, me uh, the measured signal is y i right. The equivalent optimization problem for or in the distributed case would be we would want to minimize if there are n agents in the network 
we would want to minimize let's use some other and instead of let's say there are m agents in the network okay so let's assume there are m agents in the network so every agent has its own uh, measurement matrix m sub i and it for the same unknown signal x it ends up uh, measuring y sub i right because it's going to have its own model here there's going to be v sub i noise in in its own measurement so this is what we want to minimize as a team objective right so we would want to come up because it's it's the same signal that every every agent every sensor is trying to measure it's the same x that every agent is trying to measure so we want to arrive at a common x but then you want to at the same time you want to make sure that every agent's individual sort of error this residual error is minimized right so the measurement matrix mi and the measured signal yi they are not known to central agent some central entity and the question is how do you solve such problems yeah all these agents are independent uh, they have their own like i mean let's say they have their own sensors and they have their own measurement matrix okay you can also think of this problem in terms of let's say you are trying to find a solution to ax equal to b but then every agent can only see a bunch of rows right every agent has its own a sub i right in that large matrix every agent can only see a bunch of rows and but then it's the same x that is shared across every agent and that is what they need we need to figure out right so if i if every agent tries to solve its own problem everyone would get its own estimate of xi what xi would look like right so in a distributed like and another way to sort of pose this problem is so minimize y minus sorry x size subject to x1 equal to x2 equal to x right so it's the same problem same problem but now it's this problem is being expressed as a distributed optimization problem right now everyone would have their own x size right they would try to solve their own local optimization problem but they would also try to run some kind of consensus on what they see and what their neighbors see and based on that they would try and make sure that this uh, all the measurements or all the like all all the estimates of the unknown signal x size they eventually turn out to be same or consistent across all the agents and this becomes a distributed like basically writing the same centralized problem in a distributed manner now but then it comes with an additional constraint here right so the same constrained optimization problem which was a centralized optimization problem the uh, unconstrained optimization problem which was centralized optimization problem becomes a constrained optimization problem because now we are trying to write in a distributed manner okay is this clear any questions on this example so these are i mean just nodes in a graph in some sense so this is just to de denote one the presence of a sensor a sensor measures yi and has its own measurement matrix m sub i so one the, one yeah one dot is one sensor so if there is no like let's say these sensors are not joined right so there is so this this edge indicates that this particular sensor can communicate with the neighboring sensor so there is no communication happening whatsoever then i mean they would only know of their m y sub i they would only know their mi and they would end up computing their own xi there is no way for them to know what uh, everyone else is measuring so so there is no way for them to recalibrate what the overall x looks like right so let's say you have multiple temperature sensors installed in this room every temperature sense like every let's say sensor measures its own estimate of what the temperature is going to look like but the overall room temperature may be different from what it has measured right but by being able to communicate with the neighboring sensors you can get a sense of what everyone is measuring and then try and uh, get to a common value so this basically edge indicates communication between different agents
They can so that's that's a good question. Uh, so they can, depending on the problem. So in this case, I mean they will largely be sharing their XIs, right? But uh, so if if you look, I mean in the previous lecture we looked at a very similar problem where we had four temp different temp temperatures being measured, right? And then everyone was sharing their own estimate of what temperatures would look like, and the goal was to arrive at a common temperature based on. But then in this case we are not just measure, like sharing their XIs is one thing, but at the same time they are also solving the optimization problem. So it's not just about arriving at a consensus value, but it's also uh, every time you are also trying to solve this particular optimization problem too, right? So it um, combines both optimization as well as consensus. Okay. Any other questions on this uh, problem? Another example uh, is SVM. So what is the full form of SVM? support vector machines right so we'll try and formulate svm as an uh, mathematical optimization problem again i mean not in a distributed not necessarily in a distributed setting but we'll as of now our emphasis is more towards being able to frame an optimization problem right so let's say you have a set of So you have a set of two or maybe your two different two classes right and then your your goal is to find a separating hyperplane not necessarily through origin your goal is to find a separating hyperplane that basically separates these two classes right and there can be multiple such hyperplanes right this is not unique I mean I can if this is let's say this is one of these separating hyperplanes that separates uh, positively labeled class or, uh, uh, from the negatively labeled class uh, you can also look at equivalent uh, let us say a hyperplane which looks something like this right slightly displaced from this. and this is also a, another example of a separating hyperplane that separates these two classes. So in SVM, so what do we do in SVM then? I mean because the answer is not unique right if this is a separating hyperplane maybe this is also a separating hyperplane. Yeah so we want to find a hyperplane which maintains the maximum margin and what is maximum margin? So basically we look at something called supporting vectors. So from this separating hyperplane you look at the points on either side such that I mean basically the corresponding parallel hyperplane kind of simply just touches one of the points or the nearest point to that particular hyperplane and you want to maximize this distance. So that way you maintain a maximum robustness in like given this separating hyperplane you maintain maximum robustness on either side right. So if you are, if I am going to perturb this uh, hyperplane a little bit uh, if I instead of choosing this if I had chosen this particular uh, hyperplane to be the separating hyperplane by just perturbing it a little bit to the right hand side I would have ended up uh, incorrectly classifying this particular point. But that is uh, I mean we want to maintain maximum sort of margin from either side and the in SVM the goal is to basically uh, find this kind of separating hyperplane equation uh, would be. Okay, so this is the separating hyperplane. Okay, so for a point xi, so xi's are these points, and yi's are going to be labels of these points. So these are, let's say, the labels are plus one here, and the labels here are minus one. So for any point uh, for which w transpose xi plus b is greater than 0. So this means that the label yi should be plus 1 and if the this is uh, less than 0 then you have you assign a label minus 1 right ok alright. So what is the distance of a point? So we want to maximize this particular distance right. We want to maximize in some sense we want to maximize the minimum distance. So because I mean we want to really we really care about this particular distance or maybe this particular distance. 
So we want to maximize the minimum distance of a point from the separating hyperplane. That is our objective, right? In order to maintain maximum margin, we want to maximize the minimum distance. Is this clear? So what is the distance of a point from the hyperplane? Let's say I choose a point xi. So what is the distance? Yeah. So W transpose Okay, so this is the distance of a point from the hyperplane and we want to maximize the minimum distance. So the minimum distance let us say d is minimum over all points So the thing is I mean while this is fine I mean there is still some level of ambiguity right because you can make your w n be arbitrarily small or arbitrarily large and this is I mean this does not fix the scale from issue right. So I mean you do not you still do not get a unique solution to it. So we look for points such that the minimum distance this this is basically d times for the minimum distance d times norm of w that is equal to 1. So that fixes the scale problem. Why? Again, let us look at this particular distance, right? So, d is what we are trying to maximize. But if I look at this particular problem, I can make my w n be arbitrarily small or arbitrarily large because it is also normalized by w, norm of w. I mean, there is no unique solution to it, right? There are multiple solutions for which, let us say, if, if w and b are solutions, 2 w and 2 b are or can also be solutions and so on. So, there is no unique solution to it, right? So, in order to fix that scale issue, we want to look for minimum uh, this distance or the this d, this minimum distance point such that d times norm of w is equal to 1, okay. Is this clear? So, this, this is just to fix the scale problem, fixes scale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in, the, in your training set. We care about the unique. So, if you look at just look at the d here, right? Definition of d. So, it is w transpose xi divided by norm of w, right? So, everything if you scale up or scale down, so if w and b are solution, 2 w and 2 b are also solution, right? So, there is no way for you to find uh, what is your, uh, I mean, in some sense, there is no unique solution to this problem. So, the problem is not well posed, rather. So, Huh. Like w and b are input, like no, no, W and B are not. I mean, W and B is what we are trying to find. X size are the points which are inputs, and we want to make sure that for our, for the W and B that we are going to find out. First of all, these make sense. So W transpose X i plus B greater than zero. Uh, if that is tr that is true, then Y i should be plus one. So these should make sense, and at the same time, the dis the minimum distance should be maximized. And now, since the problem is not well posed, uh, at least in terms of uniqueness, uh, we want to fix the scale. And in order to fix the scale, we choose this particular criteria here. Is this clear to everyone? All right. So, having said that, uh, so what do we want to do? We want to maximize the minimum distance, right? Maximize with respect to, so what are my decision variables or optimization variables? W and B is what we are trying to find. We want to maximize d and because of this uh, this particular constraint over here, this is equivalent to maximizing one over norm w, right? Which is equivalent to minimizing Okay. If we want to maximize 1 over norm w, it is equivalent to minimizing norm w, right, or norm w square. Is this clear? Yeah. In the previous example, we were trying to find x1 and x2, right, or in this case x. So, the unknown signal is what we are trying to estimate based on the measured signal y. And if I know the, like if I know the sensor's measurement matrix and the measured signal, from that we are trying to estimate what x would look like. 
the true signal that we are trying to estimate. Okay. So is this clear to everyone? So we want to maximize the distance and because of this uh, scale thing, it is equivalent to maximizing 1 over norm w which is equivalent to minimizing this particular. Yeah, well I mean minimizing norm w which is same as you, you instead of minimizing simply just norm w, you can just write I mean you can write this as uh, norm w square which is again there is a reason why we want to work with the uh, quadratic functions because it is much nice they are much nicer to optimize and we are going to look at some uh, glimpses of it uh, towards the end of today's lecture uh, that uh, working with the so th these functions they belong to something called strongly con the class of strongly convex functions and it is much easier to work with uh, strongly convex function. So is everyone okay with the objective part of the op like optimization problem? So this is your objective function. Now what are the constraints? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean because of this constraint we, we simply uh, get rid of that particular part right. Because of this d times norm w equal to 1 we want to maximize d. So we just now write everything in terms of w I, I mean I do not really care about internal definition of it as much. I mean we still have to work with these two constraints though. And these constraints will get fixed accordingly because now we know that the minimum distance is going to be at least 1 right. So is there a neat way to write these constraints? Y i w transpose x i plus b this should be greater than or equal to 1. Because the minimum distance we know is now going to be 1 and if this is positive y i is plus 1 if this is negative y i is negative 1. So, the product of these are always going to be positive and because the minimum distance is uh, plus 1. So, here we are using this particular definition of d right. So, our final uh, optimization problem for SVM is minimize okay. And these y i and x i are your data points right. So, x i is a given data point and y i is the corresponding label for that which is going to be the plus 1 or minus 1. So, when you try to fit a separating hyperplane uh, in case of SVM, you are given some training data points x, uh, of the form x i y i on those training data points. So, this is true for every i. For every i, let us say you have n data points or uh, m data points okay, for every i in okay. So, this these constraints need to be so, you have m, in, m inequality constraints and these basically this is also going to be and you have m set of uh, points in your training set. Is this clear? So, here this part right. So, the okay. this is the definition of a dis so this is a dis this is a maximum distance or the minimum minimum, minimum distance yeah yeah this is a minimum distance of all that like so di is a distance of a point from this separating hyperplane and you find the minimum distance and then you want to maximize that distance yeah op over the op because x i's so these points are like your x i's and the label is like x i plus 1 and then similarly you have x i prime and label is minus 1. So, b. So, b would be the offset like or the intercept right. So, I mean it not pass through origin. So, I mean if it passes through origin then b equal to 0. Yeah, but if b does not pass through origin then I mean it need not pass through origin right. So, then you will have a non-zero b. Okay. And this is your uh, constrained optimization for SVM. Now, having learned how to pose uh, math, like given a problem, how to come up with a mathematical formulation for the corresponding optimization problem, let us look at a few more uh, relevant concepts which are 
convex sets and convex functions. Yeah, as of now, I mean, we are not looking at any algorithm. We are just trying to study the basic concepts of uh, optimization in general. Uh, so, I mean, initially we would start with centralized optimization and eventually we would move to. So, for this, in, for instance, uh, let me get back a bit. Yeah, so let us say the same SVM problem. Now, why is it, why does it become challenging when we try to solve it in a distributed manner? So, let us say I give you this set of points. Uh, So these say these are positively labeled points and then at the same time I give you some negatively labeled points. And looking at these points it appears that uh, a good like separating hyperplane a candidate for good separating hyperplane should look something like this right. Now assume that uh, this data is distributed across multiple users. So maybe the user 1 it has access to these set of points, right? And if user 1 ends up finding it is his or her own uh, separating hyperplane just based on these points, what would be the uh, hyperplane it would end up finding? It would be, it would look something like this, which is way different from the centralized or the, uh, the hyperplane that we are really looking for, right? So, every agent depending on their data distribution, they would end up finding hyperplanes which look very different from the a uh, hyperplane that we eventually want to solve for. And this becomes a challenge when we again, uh, when we try to solve it completely locally. So that means this should also involve, let us say I end up for, uh, finding a uh, like one particular hyperplane based on my data. Then I am going to exchange some information with my, with my neighbor to get a sense of what kind of hyperplane he or she is uh, being able to find, right. And based on that I am going to maybe course correct myself uh, and then try to find a better hyperplane and so on and eventually the same thing would be done by every other agent in the network and they would be they would try and arrive at this particular centralized solution. So, the thing the challenge with the when you have data distributed across multiple users is let us say it, for instance uh, I mean so you understand that we are looking for this green hyper separating hyperplane right depending on the data distribution. But if I look at the individual data distribution between like different agents. So, agent 1 for instance has these set of points. Now, for these set of points, a corresponding separating hyperplane would be would look something like this, which is way different from what we want, what we are aiming for, right? And let us say another user, uh, maybe another user has access to these set of data points. So, they will try, they will end up finding this to be their separating hyperplane. So, everyone's separating hyperplane looks different from the centralized solution. And it really depends on the data points that they have access to. Now, if everyone just solves uh, their own optimization problem and do not care about the optimization problem that others are trying to solve or the data points that others may have. This becomes a challenge to find to basically come up with a good answer right because just because this particular user user has not seen points in this uh, in this domain it does not mean that uh, this uh, this is going to be this particular hyperplane is going to uh, solve his or her own, own like uh, optimization problem in future times as well right. Let us say uh, tomorrow at, at certain point they could get access to this particular data point maybe a data point somewhere over here. This would be classified as a positively labeled point even though it should have been classified as a negatively labeled point right. So, the more the users you have in the network and the more the variety of the data is there in the network I mean if you are able to solve a centralized optimization problem that would be a good or a very good estimate like that would be a better candidate than try, trying to solve this problem locally based on a very small set of data right. And that is uh, that is a challenge when we when we work in distributed settings. So if everyone starts solving their problems locally, everyone would have their own or uh, own estimates of uh, what the separating hyperplane would look like, and this would be very different from an ideal solution. So not only they need to solve this optimization problem, they also need to exchange information or communicate with their neighbors so as to get a sense of how everyone else is doing. And based on that, they would try and cooperatively sort of try to arrive at this particular centralized objective, right? Because uh, I mean, as of now, everyone's uh, everyone's hyperplane looks very different from what this should look like, right? And again, this is this is another challenge uh, with distributed optimization problem. When you do not have a centralized ent entity, how do you guarantee that uh, 
you end up solving the centralized objective function without I mean ev ev without all the ent agents having access to their neighbor's data or their neighbor's neighbor's data or the data of everyone else is in the network. Okay. Yeah. So usually then you allow certain some amount of error and you want to minimize that error. But this is this is the case when uh, so so just to reiterate the question is in in an exceptional case yes, it may happen. So for instance even over here let us say what if one of the data just one of the data point ends up being over here right. And in that case we cannot find a separating hyperplane that separates all the positively and the negatively labeled data points. So in that case we I mean the optimization problem is somewhat different but you want to minimize the number of mismatches or misclassifications. Yeah, yeah. So if if you are looking at this version of the problem where you you I mean this where you have a hard constraint. So this this is a, this, I mean you can then go to look at soft SVMs. But if you have a hard constraint of this form, then I mean such these kind of scenarios are not uh, I mean you cannot handle. There are other ways. Uh, I mean let's say I mean this is just one of the examples. But uh, I mean you can also have scenarios of this form where you have let's say all the positively labeled data points in distributed in a outer periphery and maybe negatively labeled data points somewhere over here. So no matter what kind of hyperplane you end up drawing you would never be able to separate uh, these points right. So in that case I mean ideal uh, instead of hyper the hyperplane should look something like this right. So we use something called kernel SVMs for solving such problems where we would try and uh, project these points in, in a higher dimensional in, a, in an abstract higher dimensional space where these points are linearly separable draw a hyperplane there and then sort of project it back. So uh, using kernels. So we use something called kernel SVMs but yeah I mean there are cases where you, you may not be like this is a very simplistic scenario just to motivate you uh, how to formulate mathematical optimization problems. But I mean there are settings where you obviously cannot uh, separate all points perfectly. And in that case you would obviously have to allow some, some amount of error right. Just when you train a neural network for instance I mean you never get 100 percent kind of accuracy right. You always get some some uh, maybe how good even with data sets like MNIST which are relatively I mean nowadays at least relatively simpler I mean the accuracy is still around 99.5 99.6 percent right. So there is always some misclassification and that is fine and sometimes those misclassification can also be due to the fact that a, a particular data point has been incorrectly labeled. I mean it should have been classified it is being classified correctly but the, or the true label that was assigned to it that was incorrect right. So you cannot avoid such, such scenarios. <coughs>